Okay, everybody. So for the students that are in uh, school right now who are in-person learners, um, either Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursdays, you guys have been working on the Gmetrics uh, practice exams and trying to learn as much as possible for the uh, certification test that we're going to be taking later. So I want to do these videos uh, where I go through the uh, core practice exams. If you are not able to uh, access these at home, then I need you guys to watch the videos of the uh, practice exams one, two, and three. And I'll do separate videos for each one so that you don't have to like try and find your way through this uh, giant video. <laughs> um, I want to do the exams, uh, practice exam steps and show you how to do each one of those so that you can watch the video and at least see what's going on with each one of the exams and the important things that you need to know to be ready for the test, which will be coming up later. All right, so let me go ahead and present. All right, let's make sure that presentation screen is working properly and not flashy in any way or being weird. <laughs> okay, seems to be doing fine. All right, so let's go ahead and go to, uh, we went to Word. We're now in a Word core practice exam training mode one. Okay, and for this com this uh, computer here, I haven't done it before, so I had to download all of the exercise uh, materials, and now it's going to prepare the test. Hopefully, that doesn't take too long. Um, if you are doing the tests and it does take a really long time to do stuff, you might uh, you might end up having to uh, uh, stop the process and restart the. Uh, Restarted to get it going again. Sometimes, sometimes Geometrics is a little funny, and it kind of like it, it has little hitches and you know, uh, like spits and furts and stuff like that. And it doesn't really do so well. Okay, so it looks looks to me like might uh, have some issues. Let's see if I can move this unduck. Let's see. No, not in that area. Okay, I'm going to try and set this up to where I can do the projects over here on this screen as opposed to the other screen. be able to do it this way and hopefully it works out um, so uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is kind of a hard one to start off with and if you can't really remember how to do this stuff do not get stuck on this question um, make sure that you are able to uh, like complete more of the test than not uh, possibly you know you might have to skip you might have to skip through um, certain portions of the test that you're not good at um, so a lot of people uh, will get stuck on task one and then waste a lot of time, but it's like if you just don't get it, move on. You know, test taking strategies, move on with your life. Okay, so in the first part it says on page two, so we're going to scroll down to page two, uh, between the sections affordable pricing and contact us, so that'll be this spot right here. Now if you don't see this backwards looking P, remember, you need to do this with this little backwards looking P uh, right here. Uh, that is the um, thing that shows you your um, non-printing characters, uh, just so that you can see where some things have been placed, like pressing the enter key and things like that. Okay, it says insert the file, bicycle pricing, XLS, located in the Geometrics template folder, accept all defaults. So the important thing to see here is on page two, in between affordable pricing and contact us, which is this spot right here, insert a file, but it's an XLS spreadsheet. It is not a Word document. So what you want to do is when you insert stuff and you're going to put in an object, okay, it's not text from file, so you want to put in it, it put it in as an object. Okay, so you click on object, you select the object from the download menu, and then we already have the file. We're not new. This isn't a new file that we're making. This uh, we're we're going to create this from an existing file. So create the file, browse for it, 
Okay, and you're going to see that there is a uh, G metrics template folder in the documents. Okay, the documents folder has the G metrics template folder. Now, sometimes it's like if, you, if they ask you to put in a picture or something like that, you're going to put in the pictures folder. Just uh, surf on over to the documents folder and then go to the G metrics uh, templates folder and you'll find what you need there. So here's the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can see it's green. It's got an X, uh, Microsoft Excel, blah, blah, right there. Bicycle pricing was the name that they asked for, and this is the file that we want. So go ahead and say insert, say OK. Uh, bada boom, bada bing. Eventually, uh, real quick, hopefully, uh, there will be a spreadsheet table plopped right into our document. There it is. Okay, now when you're complete, hit the mark complete button. Now, if you do need help, you can use help, but make sure that you look at the question first. Make sure that you understand this these questions and you, you understand that what it is you're looking for and then you use the help. Now before you go to task two, get rid of the help and go on to task two. Okay. Now keep this in mind. You need to know what these questions here are asking you to do. If you don't remember what this is, then on the test this is all you're going to see and you won't remember what things it is that are related to this, what activities are related to this kind of question. And so you're not going to understand what it is that you need to do to get uh, correct answers on the test. So be sure to understand this part to memorize or remember these kind of words and those kind of words are associated with these kind of steps. Okay, Don't just do the steps just to get through them. Make sure that you're understanding what it is you're being asked and then understand the steps that are necessary to do it. Okay, so hyperlink the header bicycle advantages on page one. So here's the words bicycle advantages on page one. Okay, we're going to hyperlink them, which means we are going to insert, once again, the insert tab, insert a hyperlink. Okay, and because it's an existing web page, HTTP, Wikipedia, or Wikibicycle, so that's an existing web page. Sometimes the, quest, the, the test asks you to do something to make an email address um, hyperlinked, and you would use this to email address, but in this case, uh, we are doing a something that goes to a website, so we would already be clicked here into existing file or web page. These are the words that we're displaying, so go down here to the address that you want to go to and type it in exactly. Now, always be sure to type it in exactly as you see it in the bold and underlined letters. Uh, if you don't type it in exactly as you see it, then it might, like some small little misspelling might uh, ruin your day and keep you from getting points for this thing that we are trying to accomplish. Okay, now you can tell that it's blue now and clicky, so that is accomplished, all right? So task number three, insert a continuous section break on page two just before the heading affordable pricing. Now, if you've got these things, uh, if you've got these uh, uh, markers turned on, these uh, non-printing characters turned on. You go in front of affordable housing and you press continuous section break, nothing's going to happen because it actually um, will make it happen here on the end of page one. So I'm going to get in front of affordable pricing like it says to do. Uh, and then I'm going to do a continuous section break. Now, that's a layout thing. That's like where things are and how, they're, um, how they are in relation to other things. Okay, and it says continuous section break. So go to the layout tab. There is breaks right here in the page setup area, and you would go for a section break, see section break, so section break, and you want to hide the continuous one. So here is a continuous section break, okay? And you can see that the continuous section break pops up here on page one, and that uh, separates uh, the uh, layout stuff on this part of the document from the layout stuff on this part of the document. You didn't see anything happening, but the, if you have your, um, non-printing characters up, you will see that this thing did pop up here. And that's what's supposed to happen. Okay, test number four, in the first list. Okay, that will be this list right here. Okay, uh, replace the bullets for all the points below the bicycle advantages heading uh, with the graphic bike rider PNG located in the Gmetrics templates folder. So we're going to replace these standard issue dots with a picture, okay? And these dots are bullet points. So on the home tab, here's our bullet point stuff right here. Click on the drop down menu and you can define a new bullet, which means, uh, hey, I like those bullets, but I want to define something else as the bullet now. So we're going to do that. We're going to say we're going to get a picture. And it's going to be from a file on our computer. 
And we're going to go not on the local disk, not in the picture folder, but to the documents folder where our geometrics templates are. And we will click to get this bike rider picture inserted. Now you can see the bullet points are actually now little bicycles. Aha, say OK, and the bullet points become bicycles. That's what that means. Replace the bullets with a picture. That's what that means. Okay. Now on to task five, apply the soft edge rectangle style uh, to the photo at the bottom of page one. So here's from the bottom of page one. Uh, that's the picture. So we click on the picture, and when we click on the picture, what do we get? We get picture tools. Okay. So we click on the picture tools formatting and a soft edge rectangle style. So here is the picture style area. Here is a picture style area. Now, soft edge basically means that the edges around the picture are going to get fuzzy. Okay, so what's one of the first ones that we see here where the edges go fuzzy? It would be this one right here, the soft edge rectangle style. Okay, you can see that there's a little wind, uh, there's a little uh, box that pops up. And when I go over the document, or whenever I go over one of these things and it says soft edge rectangle on it, so I click, the task is complete. Now I grade the project. To move on to the next one, you must grade this project first. Okay, it goes through all five of them and checks to see if you did them right. If it likes it, it gives you checks. If it didn't like what you did, it'll give you an X. Um, move on. Okay, unless you got all of them wrong, you should probably just move on to the next one so that you can get all of the information that you need. Okay. Let me just retrain. Yes, here we go. Here's our new document. Uh, task one says, after the last paragraph. Okay, so that's this point right here. Insert the text, ah, the text from the file, wireless networks, docx. So we're going to insert from a docx file. Remember what I was saying about inserting things, inserting objects? Okay, if it's a Word document, you use text from file. If it's not a Word document, then it's an object. So this time we're going to use text from file. Okay, so get the drop down menu and object, say text from file, and now you select which document it is. Remember, go to the geometrics folder if it's not already there. Uh, wireless networks document. Okay, so you can see W with the Word document, wireless networks, that's the one. Insert it. And words from that document now appear into this document. Yay. Okay, task number two modify the whole document. Okay, so usually when you see a whole document thing, it's design, but in this case, it's layout because we're talking about margins. So modify the whole document so the margins are one inch uh, top and bottom and left and right is 1.2. So uh, I don't see that in any of the list of things here. So we're gonna have to custom margin this bad boy. Okay, we're gonna have to customize our margins. So the top and bottom, top and bottom are already one inch. Left and right though, two inches, two inches. Nope, we need 1.2 inches so use these down arrows to get down to 1.2 on those margins. Okay, don't change the gutter, don't change the gutter partition, leave everything else the same, say okay. Okay, now we've got a little bit more, uh, less space, less blank space on the sides that the margin did. Okay, all right, task number three, apply the basic elegant style set to the document, all right? Style set to the entire document means that it's going to be in the design tab. Okay, uh, basic, simple, basic, stylish. Okay, I'm going in the wrong direction. They're in alphabetical order for the most part. Basic, elegant, here we are. Click on it, and this document formatting style is now on. Okay, that's task number three. Task number four, apply a box border around the entire document. Okay, so page borders around the entire document is this right here. Okay, um, solid line, yes. Box border, yes. And it says one and a half point wide, color automatic. So automatic colors are already there. So width, one and a half point. Should be the only thing you really need to change. You click on the box and you say, okay. And bada bing, now there's a, now there's a nice uh, line, a thick line around our box, or around our document. Okay, task number five. Network.jpg photo located in the Gmetrics template to the left of the first paragraph. Okay, so here's the first paragraph. Uh, right in front of the word A computer, put your marker there. It says insert a picture. Okay, now you should, uh, at this point, you should automatically be going to the Gmetrics folder because you already took a picture from there. 
but if not, remember it's just documents, uh, documents folder, and then geometrics templates. Okay, so here's the networking picture. I insert it, but look, uh, it makes the words go down. Apply tight text wrapping. Now, if you still got the picture selected, you can do your layout options button here. Text wrapping, toit, toit text wrapping. Click on that and the words now come around. If you really need some more help with that on the picture tools, there is wrap text over here and you can toitly do it right here. And that'll do the same thing. Okay, that's step five complete. Grade that project. Now remember folks, if you're having troubles uh, keeping up with me, it's not a big deal. Um, I should have mentioned this earlier, but um, you can do this on your own um, if you're trying to follow along on your own Gmetrics document, uh, you can do this yourself uh, and just pause me after I do a thing, you do the thing, and then unpause and keep watching the video until the next thing is ready. So we're going down to project number three now. So here's our document, which should stop doing that. Okay, so um, below the heading, our most popular flavors. So let's see. Here we go. Uh, here's the heading, our most popular flavors. So below that, sort the table alphabetically from A to Z. Okay, so here's the table. You can tell it's a table because when you click on it, one of these little boxes shows up with these uh, four arrows. Click on it to get the whole box selected. And once you click on it, you get some contextual tabs. You get some table tools here. So on the layout tab, there's going to be a thing for sorting. Okay, and you click on it, and it'll sort, and it's like, what column do you want me to sort? Well, there's only one column. <laughs> so column one, what does it look like? It's text. You could you'd like you could search by number or by date, but we're, this is obviously text, so we're going to search by text. And ascending or descending? Well, if it says A to Z, that's ascending. If it's from Z to A, or uh, biggest number to smallest number, that's descending. So ascending from A to Z. So, okay. And everything gets sorted out properly. Okay, that step's complete. Task number two. Below the heading key clients, here's the heading key clients. Convert the text, the party people, all the way down to ice cream, use cream. So the party people, all the way to ice cream, use cream. Highlight those. Uh, convert that to a list with default bullets. Default just means the normal bullets. So if you just go to the bullet uh, list here and you just click on it, that's exactly what you need to do. You don't need to like select anything weird or anything like that. Just click on the bullets. It makes bullets, bada boom, bada bing, this step's complete. Task number three, on the cover of the brochure, that would be the first page, and this part of the first page, draw a text box between the title ice cream shop and the graphic, which is the fan, graphics, a fancy word for picture. Okay, um, so you got to insert a text box. Here's your text box. And you go down there and you see that there's a thing for a draw text box. Now this is weird. For some reason on Geometrics, every time I click on draw a text box, oh, wow, it actually did it right this time. Um, if you don't get it the first time, just do the same steps again, and you'll get this black cross, and then you can draw a box about that big. There is your text box, and it says inside the text box, type the text, we specialize in custom flavors. So make sure you are spelling it exactly the same with the same capitalization and this exclamation point and everything like that. Now specialize is a tricky word. Make sure you're spelling it correctly. Make sure you're spelling everything correctly. Make sure you're getting the exclamation point on the end. Bada boom, bada bing, that step is done. Task number four, apply the inner shadow effect, blah, 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 to the ice cream cone graphic on the cover of the brochure. So that's this picture right here. Click on the picture. You get picture tools and table tools. Well, we don't need table tools. We're trying to change the picture. Okay, so we need an inner shadow effect. Okay, so picture tools, picture effects is right here. Okay, we're on the picture and we're trying to change its effects. It is an inner shadow effect. So here's the shadows and here are the outer effects and here are the inner effects. So an inner shadow effect, which one do we need? In uh, top left. So this is, if you look at the thing, inside top, inside diagonal top right, inside diagonal top left. That's the thing that we want, inside diagonal top left. Doesn't say the exact same thing as what the instructions do, but that's the correct one. 
Okay, now you go to test five. Apply the uh, off axis blah, blah, blah effect to the picture on the second page. So here's the picture on the second page. We want, once again, a picture effect. So we're going to go to the same thing, picture effects, on the picture tools, picture effects. We need an off axis one right 3D rotation. Ah, I see the words 3D rotation. Uh, off axis one right parallel effect. So here are the parallel effects. And if you search around enough, and you look at the little names as they pop up, you got off axis one right. Ah, that's the right one. Okay, here's off axis one left. Here's off axis one right. That's the one we need. Click it. And that step is complete. Now, great project. The next one comes up right after I press next. Okay, now for this one. Task number one says on page two, bookmark the heading Moab, Utah. Here's Moab, Utah. Okay. Um, just try and select the uh, just the uh, word Moab, Utah. If you keep running into it, trying to get the uh, picture in there, uh, it's, it's not like completely bad, but it's like, you know, try your best to not get the picture in there. Uh, bookmark it. So we are going to insert a bookmark. Insert a bookmark. Okay, and we're just going to bookmark it in the lab. Make sure you spell it the exact same way, same capital letters and everything like that. Okay, and you add it, and it goes away, and that's the complete step. Okay, task two, simultaneously replace all text climbing, replace it with crawling. So on the home tab, all the way on the right-hand side, you will find your find and replace stuff. In this case, it's a replace job. What you want to do is you want to find... Climbing, press tab, replace it with crawling. I know it's really uh, small and hard to see, but this is a find and replace tab on the replace thing. Find climbing, replace it with crawling. Replace all is the button you want to push. Okay. Uh, if you're in the wrong spot, it's going to say, hey, we made zero replacements. You want to search the rest? Yes, do it. Uh, zero replacements, you want to search from the beginning? Yes, do it. Oh, look, all done. We made two replacements. Yay. Okay, well, we're done with that. Now close this. Mark your completed task and go to task three. On the bottom of page two, create a table from the text mountain locations all the way down to depending on equipment. All right, so mountain locations all the way down to depending on equipment. Highlight this entire area. And you are going to make a table out of this. So you're going to have to go to the insert tab, which is where the table stuff is. Okay, get the drop down menu for tables, go past the uh, table drawing thing, and you're going to convert this text that we have into a table. Um, now, if you um, know that this has been tabbed over to make the uh, arrangements the way they are, then you're going to want to say two columns, yes. Uh, we are separating by tabs because tabs is what we use to get to the next one. We say okay. Bada boom, bada bing. Now it's a table. Okay, mark it complete. Go to task four. Page one. Change the bullets on the first list. That will be this list. To a solid circle to match this list. Right now we got little um, navigational wheels. We want them to look like this one with uh, the solid circles. So go down to the drop down list of the um, bullet points here. And we want to use just regular old uh, standard issue bullets. Okay. Bada boom, bada bing, the bullets look the same now. We're good. Okay. Task number five, add the cover page integral. Now, it doesn't matter where you are in the document. If you go to the insert tab and you go to the cover page thing on the first part here in the pages section, you find the one uh, at the bottom where the names are where it says integral. You can click on that, and it automatically puts it in as the first page. Mark it complete. Create the project. Bada boom, bada bing. All check marks. Way to go. Good job, Mr. Lincoln. All right, fishing adventures time. Create two columns using the text, Fishing Derby as Success, 
all the way down to local fish enhancement. That's this right here. Okay, so fishing derby success all the way down to local fish enhancement. That's this first right here. Um, the section breaks. Uh, the section breaks that are above and below it allow you to make changes to the layout of this section here without affecting any of the other parts of the document. So layout tab, columns, and you can go to more columns right away if you want to, or you can just press two and then, but then you're just going to have to come back to more columns anyway. So go to more columns, select to do two columns. It says make the columns a certain uh, thing wide. So 285 wide. No, we got... Okay, so we're going to have to type it in because it went from 27 to 28 to 29. So 2.85 uh, wide with the spacing between the columns of 0.3. And it automatically adjusted to 0.3, so we're good to go there. Okay, um, except all other defaults, which means we're done here. Say okay. Bada bing, two columns. Task number two, apply the style... Uh, blah 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 to the table on the second page. So here's the table on the second page. This right here with all the months and everything. Click on this uh, four square arrows to select the entire thing. Now, design of the table tools, layout of the table tools. Just go to design. Okay, here are the table tool, uh, table styles. Okay, you get this drop down list and it's like a grid table. All right, grid tables, that's the ones here. Okay, dark. So we got regular grid tables that are light, uh, regular grid tables that are regular, and then regular grid tables that are dark. Okay, so grid table five, dark, accent one, nope, two, three, four, five. Grid table five, dark, accent five. Okay, click on that, changes the colors of the layout, bada boom, bada bing, it is done. Okay, task number three. Insert an endnote on the second page that reads that. Uh, reference the endnote from the last sentence of the first paragraph. Uh, fabulous all year. So here is the words fabulous all year. Click at the end of that sentence. Okay, go to references. References is where you find all that citations and footnotes and endnotes and all that stuff for your reference uh, documents when you're writing reports and stuff for school or college or whatever. Okay, you're gonna go endnote, insert endnote. Okay, and down here at the bottom, you're gonna write up your endnote. Okay, and you're gonna type up the words that they require. Oregon fishing license required. Make sure you are spelling it exactly as they say. Make sure that you are putting in periods where words are underlined, but mm, since they're not underlined here, I'm not putting one in. Okay, uh, it also says at the bottom, use the endnote number format, one, two, three. So what you do here is you get on this endnote. Okay, you go back up to here, and you right-click on it, and I think I missed. Okay. All right, so for these, you can also go to this uh, area of the footnotes here, and you can go to the uh, menu opener, uh, your, your dialog box pop-up launcher. Um, you can go and select it from here as well, the number format. You can change it to one, two, three, and apply. Okay, and now instead of an I, it's got a one. Okay, that's done. That's three complete, test four time. Second page below the plan a trip headline, enhance the graphic. Now this confuses a lot of people. Enhance the graphic. This is a graphic. This is a smart art. Therefore, it's a graphic. Okay, uh, enhance the graphic by applying colorful uh, colors. So that's gonna be a design thing. Color change, colorful section of color change. Uh, accent colors five to six. Okay, colorful range, accent colors five to six. That's this one. All right, bada boom, bada bing, that's done. Test number five just says, add the text, catch a fish to the last shape of the graphic. So click on the last shape of the graphic here and type in catch a fish. Make sure that you capitalize fish and put the exclamation point on it. 
you're good to go. I'll create that project. How's it going over there, Steven? You getting work done? All right, project six, we're cruising. We're on the way. Okay, display the paragraph marks on the document. Now, I just turned off the paragraph marks that we were using before to make us do this. So, paragraph marks, we've been using those a lot this year. Click on that, you get your paragraph marks back. Step complete. Task number two, remove all of the document properties and personal information from the flyer. Leave all the other hidden properties. Okay, so um, document properties is a file tab thing. Okay, these are the document properties. But to find all of the personal information, document properties, and all that hidden property stuff, you got to check for issues. See right here, it says inspect document. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Be aware that it contains document properties and the author's name. See, there you go. You got to check for that stuff with this. So inspect the document for weird stuff. Okay, do your inspection. It's going to find that there are document properties and personal information, so we are going to remove them. Okay, now it says leave all other hidden properties, so don't do anything else, just close. Okay, and go back to the document. Mark it complete. Task three. Put the quote at the bottom of the last page. Ah, okay, here is the quote. It's got quotes around it. Uh, that on the last page from Craig Stronin, uh, into the text box below it. So here's the text box. Okay, so we're going to highlight this, and we're going to click and drag. And if you can't click and drag, then just use cut and paste. Drop it in there. All right. Complete. Task four. On the first page, apply a strong font style to vision, reliability, adaptability, and family. Okay, now. Here's a quick way. Highlight one. Now hold down control. Highlight the other three. And then click on strong up here in the styles section. Okay, it's gonna get a little bit more, uh, it's gonna get a little more bold, and that's it. That's all you needed to do. Task five on the first page, change the width of the column called purpose. Okay, click on the table, and then take your mouse and just put it above the line of the thing. And you get that black arrow, you can click it, and it'll just select the uh, purpose column. Change the width of the column to 1.8. Now, you're on a table, you've got table tools. Layout, width, change it, 1.8. Done. Create that project. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay, now we're on project seven. This is the last one. We've got five steps on this one. Okay, first thing that says to do is change the status of the property. Ah, properties, document properties. Once again, where did I say that was? In the file section. Okay, now you don't see it here. There's no status here, but there is more properties, so you show all the properties. There's your status. There's your boy status. Change that to draft. Okay, spell it correctly to make sure you get good credit. <laughs> all right, uh, task two, in the end note, Okay, in the end note, here's the end note right here. Okay, uh, replace the word section with its special character. Okay, so special characters, you're going to insert special characters. They are symbols. You click on it. Uh, I don't see it here. And I just go ahead and say more symbols. And you got special characters right here on this tab. You can click between the two tabs, special characters tab. One of them is called section. Okay, you click on that, you say insert. Now, if you're over it sometimes, you're not gonna see anything happen. But if you move it off to the side, you say insert, you see that the word section is replaced by that little super groovy S right there. Okay, now don't do it again, don't hit insert again, hit close. Okay. Now, the next task, increase the font size of the whole document. Go back up to this area right here, click somewhere in this part, do control A to select everything. Go to the home tab, hit the up arrow A right here, increases all of the text by one level. Task four, remove all formatting from the endnote. Select that endnote. Use this little A with an eraser 
and that removes all the formatting. Turns it into normal text back to the original method. Mark it complete. Finally, task five, convert the text. Uh, discover scuba. Okay, discover scuba, highlight that. Convert it to word art. Okay, so you're gonna insert word art. You're gonna do the one that's a uh, blue accent one shadow. So let's find one of the blue ones and look at it. Ah, here it is, blue accent one shadow. Click it, it gets replaced. Now it says position the word art centered above the photo. Three ways you can do that. Number one, you can align it to the center. Number two, you can just grab it and pull it. Ah, but if you don't have those little green marker thingies because you're doing a different computer than before and you haven't set it up to use a uh, grid alignments on the view tab using uh, grid lines and whatnot. Um, not, not that one in particular, but um, well, basically one of the things that you can do to make it easily work that way, or you could do position. You could say uh, with text wrapping, use position. But the best way to do it is align center. And that puts it in the center. That's good to go. Grade that project. It says that everything is good. It's now time to finish your test. Okay, got it all complete. So now finish that test. Okay, you sure you wanna finish that? Sure, yes. And you're done and everything is fine and kosher and wonderful, yay. Okay. Yes, Angelina, we will get to your questions in just a minute. Um, but for now, that is the end of this demonstration and the end of our recording. So I will stop recording and I will see you later with the next video, which is uh, practice test number two.